Welcome to a new episode in The Criminalibrary. Today we are going to delve into the dark details of a crime that shook England in the 1920s, the murder of Irene Wilkins. The protagonist of our story, Thomas Alloway, a former soldier and chauffeur, carried out a heinous act that landed him on the scaffold. Join me as we unravel the mysteries surrounding this chilling case. Classification, Assassin Characteristics, Rapist Number of Victims, One or More Date of Crime, December 22, 1921 Date of Arrest, April 29, 1922 Date of Birth, 1885 Victim, Irene Wilkins Crime Method, Hammer Blows Location, London England, Great Britain Status, executed by hanging on August 19, 1922 On December 22, 1921, Irene Wilkins, a single cook from Streatham, applied for a job in a school through an advertisement in the Morning Post. A few hours later she received a telegram peppered with spelling mistakes telling her that she must go immediately to Bournemouth, where a car would pick her up. A Mr. Frank Humphreys, who was traveling on the same train, saw Miss Wilkins enter a grey-green car driven by a chauffeur. The next morning her body was found near Ilford Lane, a few kilometers east of Boscombe. Although her clothes were in disarray, the rape had not been completed. Cause of death, shock and several head injuries caused by a hammer or similar instrument. The footprint of a Dunlop Magnum tire was found near the crime scene. Among those questioned by the police was Henry Alloway, Mr. Sutton's chauffeur, who seemed to have a perfect alibi. Although three of the tires on Mr. Sutton's car were Dunlop Magnum, the fourth, the one on the left rear wheel, turned out to be Michelin. Investigations carried out at nearby telegraph offices discovered that in the space of a few days three telegrams had been sent in response to advertisements from young people looking for work. Two employees remembered that they had been picked up by a driver. On January 4, 1922, Mr. Humphreys saw the grey-green car again and took the license plate number, sending it to the police. Due to inexplicable inefficiency, it did not do any research. A month later, an employee at Boscombe Post Office recognized Alloway as the man who had sent one of the telegrams and also took the car's registration number. Although it may seem impossible, the police did not give importance to this fact either. A few days later Alloway was followed to his house by the same employee who had recognized him, despite everything, no arrest was made. On April 20, Alloway disappeared with Mr. Sutton's checkbook and began forging his signature. He was arrested in reading on April 29. Finally, the police became suspicious. Alloway's handwriting turned out to be the same as that on the printouts of the three telegrams. The day after the crime Alloway drove Mrs. Sutton to her sister's house, where she was going to have tea, and she had to wait for an hour and a half, Irene Wilkins' wallet was later found in a location near the house. Alloway was identified as the man who sent the telegram, by Mr. Humphreys and by a signalman who remembered having seen him on the night of the crime waiting for the train to arrive. It was also discovered that although he had been authorized to purchase four new tires for the car shortly before the murder he had replaced one of them with a very worn Michelin one. He was tried at Winchester in July 1922, by a court presided over by Mr. Avery, with Mr. Thomas Inskip acting as prosecutor. The defense tried, unsuccessfully, to prove an alibi. Alloway was sentenced to death after the jury deliberated for an hour. The motive for the crime was, evidently, the rape that was not consummated. Conclusion The case of Thomas Alloway and the murder of Irene Wilkins is a grim reminder of how a seemingly simple act, like responding to a job advertisement, can have tragic consequences. The efficiency and speed with which Alloway acted to lure his victim into a trap illustrates the coldness and premeditation with which this crime was carried out. The investigation of the case revealed several clues that ultimately led to Alloway's capture and conviction. 
Despite initial challenges and shortcomings in the investigation, such as the delay in linking Alloway's vehicle to the crime, concerted efforts by police and witnesses ultimately led to his arrest. The lack of a clear motive and the unusually violent nature of the crime, which was not completed in its entirety, make this case even more disturbing. Alloway's last-minute confession provided some clarity, but the true nature of his intentions may never be fully understood. Alloway's execution closed a dark chapter, but left a mark on England's criminal history. It serves as a warning about the importance of caution and awareness in a world where dangers can hide behind the most common, everyday appearances. Farewell. Thank you for joining me on this journey through the dark recesses of criminal history. If you have been interested in this story and want to continue exploring more fascinating and chilling cases, I invite you to subscribe to the channel and like this video. Your support means a lot and helps us continue bringing you more content like this. Don't forget to leave your comments and share your thoughts about this case. Until next time, in the Criminal Library. Stay safe and always alert.